Welcome back. Please share, subscribe, and comment. Audio power is the electrical power transferred from an audio amplifier to a loudspeaker, measured in watts. The electrical power delivered to the loudspeaker, together with its efficiency, determines the sound power generated, with the rest of the electrical power being converted to heat. Amplifiers are limited in the electrical energy they can output while loudspeakers are limited in the electrical energy they can convert to sound energy without being damaged or distorting the audio signal. These limits, or power ratings, are important to consumers finding compatible products and comparing competitors. Power handling in audio electronics, there are several methods of measuring power output for such things as amplifiers and power handling capacity for such things as loudspeakers. Amplifiers amplifier output power is limited by voltage, current, and temperature. Voltage. The amp's power supply voltage limits the maximum amplitude of the waveform it can output. This determines the peak momentary output power for a given load resistance. Current. The amp's output devices. Transistors or tubes have a current limit above which they are damaged. This determines the minimum load resistance that the amp can drive at its maximum voltage. Temperature. The amp's output devices weigh some of the electrical energy as heat, and if it is not removed quickly enough, they will rise in temperature to the point of damage. This determines the continuous output power. As an amplifier's power output strongly influences its price, there is an incentive for manufacturers to exaggerate output power specs to increase sales. Without regulations, imaginative approaches to advertising power ratings became so common that in 1975 the U.S. Federal Trade Commission intervened in the market and required all amplifier. Manufacturers to use an engineering measurement, continuous average power, in addition to any other value they might cite. Loudspeakers for loudspeakers. There is also a thermal and a mechanical aspect to maximum power handling. Thermal. Not all energy delivered to a loudspeaker is emitted as sound. In fact, most is converted to heat, and the temperature must not rise too high. High-level signals over a prolonged period can cause thermal damage, which may be immediately obvious, or reduce longevity or performance margin. Mechanical. Loudspeaker components have mechanical limits, which can be exceeded by even a very brief power peak. An example is the most common sort of loudspeaker driver which cannot move in, or out more than some excursion limit without mechanical damage. There are no similar loudspeaker power handling regulations in the U.S. The problem is much harder as many loudspeaker systems have very different power handling capacities at different frequencies, e.g., tweeters which handle high-frequency signals are physically small and easily damaged, while woofers which handle low-frequency signals are larger and more robust. Power calculation since the instantaneous power of an AC waveform varies over time. AC power, which includes audio power, is measured as an average over time. It is based on this formula. PAVG equals 1T integral 0 TV. T. I. T dt for a purely resistive load, a simpler equation. Can be used based on the root mean square RMS. Values of the voltage and current waveforms. PAVG equals V or MSI or MS in the case of a steady sinusoidal tone, not music, into a purely resistive load. This can be calculated from the peak amplitude of the voltage waveform, which is easier to measure with an oscilloscope, and the load's resistance. PAVG equals V or MS2 or equals VPEAK22R. Though a speaker is not purely resistive, these equations are often used to approximate power measurements for such a system. Approximations may be used as reference on a specification sheet of a product. Example, an amplifier under test can drive a sinusoidal signal with a peak amplitude of 6V driven by a 12V battery. When connected to an 8-ohm loudspeaker, this would deliver. PAVG equals 6V, 22, 8 ohms, equals 2.25W in most actual car systems. The amplifiers are connected in a bridge-tied load configuration, and speaker impedances are no higher than 4 ohms. High-power car amplifiers use a DC-to-DC -DC converter to generate a higher supply voltage. Measurements continuous power and RMS power, continuous average sine wave power ratings are a staple of performance specifications for audio amplifiers and, sometimes, loudspeakers. As described above, the term average power refers to the average value of the instantaneous power waveform 
over time. As this is typically derived from the root mean square, RMS, of the sine wave voltage. It is often referred to as RMS power or Watt's RMS, but this is incorrect. It is not the RMS value of the power waveform, which would be a larger but meaningless number. The erroneous term Watt's RMS is actually used in an ANSI standard. This is also referred to as the nominal value, there being a product mark requirement to use it. Continuous, as opposed to momentary, implies that the device can function at this power level for long periods of time, that heat can be removed at the same rate it is generated without temperature building up to the point of damage. On May 3, 1974, the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, instated its amplifier rule to combat the unrealistic power claims made by many hi-fi amplifier manufacturers. This rule prescribes continuous power measurements performed with sine wave signals for advertising and specifications of amplifiers sold in the U.S. See more in the section standards at the end of this article. This rule was amended in 1998 to cover self-powered speakers such as are commonly used with personal computers. See examples below. Typically, an amplifier's power specifications are calculated by measuring its RMS output voltage with a continuous sine wave signal at the onset of clipping, defined arbitrarily as a stated percentage of total harmonic distortion, THD, usually 1%, in a specified load resistances. Typical loads used are 8 and 4. Ohms per channel. Many amplifiers used in professional audio are also specified at 2 ohms. Considerably more power can be delivered if distortion is allowed to increase. Some manufacturers quote maximum power at a higher distortion, like 10%, making their equipment appear more powerful than if measured at an acceptable distortion level. Continuous power measurements do not actually describe the highly varied signals found in audio equipment, which could vary from high crest factor instrument recordings down to 0 dB crest factor square waves but are widely regarded as a reasonable way of describing an amplifier's maximum output capability. For audio equipment, this is nearly always the nominal frequency range of human hearing, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. In loudspeakers, thermal capacities of the voice coils and magnet structures largely determine continuous power handling ratings. However, at the lower end of a loudspeaker's usable frequency range, its power handling might necessarily be derated because of mechanical excursion limits. For example, a subwoofer rated at 100 watts may be able to handle 100 watts of power at 80 hertz, but at 25 hertz it might not be able to handle nearly as much power since such frequencies would, for some drivers and some enclosures, force the driver beyond its mechanical limits much before reaching 100 watts from the amplifier. Peak power peak power refers to the maximum of the instantaneous power waveform, which for a sine wave is always twice the average power. For other waveforms, the relationship between peak power and average power is the peak to average power ratio, PAPR. The peak power of an amplifier is determined by the voltage rails and the maximum amount of current its electronic components can handle for an instant without damage. This characterizes the ability of equipment to handle quickly changing power levels, as many audio signals have a highly dynamic nature. It always produces a higher value than the average power figure, however, and so has been tempting to use in advertising without context, making it look as though the amp has twice the power of competitors. Total system power, total system power is a term often used in audio electronics to rate the power of an audio system. Total system power, refers to the total power consumption of the unit, rather than the power handling of the speakers or the power output of the amplifier. This can be viewed as a somewhat deceptive marketing ploy, as the total power consumption of the unit will of course be greater than any of its other power ratings, except for perhaps the peak power of the amplifier, which is essentially an exaggerated value anyway. Shelf stereos and surround sound receivers are often rated using total system power. One way to use total system power to get a more accurate estimate of power is to consider the amplifier class, which would give an educated guess of the power output by considering the efficiency of the class. For example, class AB amplifiers can vary widely from 25% to 75% efficiency, while class D amps are much higher at 80% to 95%. An exceptionally efficient class D amp, the Rome BD5421EFS, 
operates at 90% efficiency. In some cases, an audio device may be measured by the total system power of all its loudspeakers by adding all their peak power ratings. Many home theater in a box systems are rated this way. Often low-end home theater systems power ratings are taken at a high level of harmonic distortion as well, as high as 10%, which would be noticeable. PMPO PMPO, which stands for peak music power output or peak momentary performance output, is a much more dubious figure of merit of interest more to advertising copywriters than to consumers. The term PMPO has never been defined in any standard, but it is often taken to be the sum of some sort of peak power for each amplifier in a system. Different manufacturers use different definitions so that the ratio of PMPO to continuous power output varies widely. It is not possible to convert from one to the other. Most amplifiers can sustain their PMPO for only a very short time, if at all. Loudspeakers are not designed to withstand their stated PMPO for anything but a momentary peak without serious damage. Power and loudness in the real world perceive loudness varies approximately logarithmically with the acoustical output power. The change in perceived loudness as a function of change in acoustical power is dependent on the reference power level. It is both useful and technically accurate to express perceived loudness in the logarithmic decibel, dB, scale that is independent of the reference power, with a somewhat straight-line relationship between 10 dB changes and doublings of perceived loudness. The approximately logarithmic relationship between power and perceived loudness is an important factor in audio system design. Both amplifier power and speaker sensitivity affect the maximum realizable loudness. Sensitivity is typically measured either suspended in an anechoic chamber in free space for full-range speakers, or with the source and receiver outside on the ground in half space, for a subwoofer. While a doubling slash having a perceived loudness corresponds to approximately 10 dB increase slash decrease in speaker sensitivity, it also corresponds to approximately 10x multiplication slash division of acoustical power. Even a relatively modest 3 dB increase slash decrease in sensitivity corresponds to a doubling slash halving of acoustical power. When measuring in half space, the boundary of the ground plane cuts the available space that the sound radiates into in half and doubles the acoustical power at the receiver for a corresponding 3 dB increase in measured sensitivity. So it is important to know the test conditions. Plus or minus 3 dB change in measured sensitivity also corresponds to a similar doubling slash having of electrical power required to generate a given perceived loudness. So even deceptively minor differences in sensitivity can result in large changes in amplifier power requirement. This is important because power amplifiers become increasingly impractical with increasing amplifier power output. Many high-quality domestic speakers have a sensitivity between 84 dB and 94 dB, but professional speakers can have a sensitivity between 90 dB and 100 dB. An 84 dB source would require a 400-watt amplifier to produce the same acoustical power, perceived loudness, as a 90 dB source being driven by a 100-watt amplifier, or a 100 dB source being driven by a 10-watt amplifier. A good measure of the power of a system is therefore a plot of maximum loudness before clipping of. The amplifier and loudspeaker combined, in dBSBL, at the listening position intended, over the audible frequency spectrum. The human ear is less sensitive to low frequencies, as indicated by equal loudness contours, so a well-designed system should be capable of generating relatively higher sound levels below 100 Hz before clipping. Like perceived loudness, speaker sensitivity also varies with frequency and power. The sensitivity is measured at one what to minimize nonlinear effects, such as power compression and harmonic distortion, and averaged over the usable bandwidth. The bandwidth is often specified between the measured plus or minus 3 dB cutoff frequencies where the relative loudness becomes attenuated from the peak loudness by at least 6 dB. Some speaker manufacturers use plus 3 dB per minus 6 dB instead to take into account the real-world in-room response of a speaker at frequency extremes where the floor-slash-wall-slash-ceiling boundaries may increase the perceived loudness. Speaker sensitivity is measured and rated on the assumption of a fixed amplifier output voltage because audio amplifiers tend to behave like voltage sources. 
Sensitivity can be a misleading metric due to differences in speaker impedance between differently designed speakers. A speaker with a higher impedance may have lower measured sensitivity and thus appear to be less efficient than a speaker with a lower impedance, even though their efficiencies are actually similar. Speaker efficiency is a metric that only measures the actual percentage of electrical power that the speaker converts to acoustic power and is sometimes a more appropriate metric to use when investigating ways to achieve a given acoustic power from a speaker. Adding an identical and mutually coupled speaker driver much less than a wavelength away from each other. And splitting the electrical power equally between the two drivers increases their combined efficiency by a maximum of 3 dB, similar to increasing the size of a single driver until the diaphragm area doubles. Multiple drivers can be more practical to increase efficiency than larger drivers since frequency response is generally proportional to driver size. System designers take advantage of this efficiency boost by using mutually coupled drivers in a speaker cabinet, and by using mutually coupled speaker cabinets in a venue. Each doubling of total driver area in the array of drivers brings 3 dB increase in efficiency until the limit where the total distance between any two drivers of the array exceeds 1 slash 4 wavelength. Power handling capability is also doubled when the number of drivers doubles. For a maximum realizable increase of 6 dB in total acoustic output per doubling of mutually coupled drivers when the total amplifier power is also doubled. Mutual coupling efficiency gains become difficult to realize with multiple drivers at higher frequencies because the total size of a single driver including its diaphragm, basket, waveguide, or horn may already exceed 1. Wavelength